Welcome to Rockstyle Productions, where in this video we are going to test out the Level Hike PS1 and PS2 AV to HD cable provided by Stone Age Gamers. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rockstyle Productions. Now, before we get started, I want to just take a second and say thank you for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here on the channel. I really do appreciate it. If you like what you see here, I invite you to check out some of the other videos that we have on the channel, including reviews of other level height cables. And if you really like what you see here, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and more important than ever, hit that bell notification because YouTube's not going to be emailing you anymore when we upload new content. So the notification system is the best way to stay informed when we do have new uploads. And what I want to know from you, PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2? Which was your favorite? Let me know down in the comment section. So we recently got a box from the folks over at Stone Age Gamer. Thanks again to those guys for hooking us up with some cool stuff. And one of the things inside was this here. This is a PS1 and PS2 high definition cable. Basically it allows you to go from either of those systems to a modern HD TV. Now it's designed to do so on a very budget friendly sort of way but it's also designed to work better than a lot of the other cables that are out there on the market. Uh, we've tested some of the other cables from Level Hike before now, and the colors were a little bit on the hot side, but performance-wise, I was really happy with the overall performance of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna throw it on the bench, check and see how it comes out of the box, and we are going to test it with both our PlayStation 1 and our PS2, which is actually playing Jet Moto 2 here behind me. Ryan Schlemmer, this one's for you. Let's get started. So here is the PS1 and PS2 cable uh, on our bench here. As you can see, a high definition cable for retro game consoles. It's pretty much the same box that they use for all of their cables. They just put a different sticker on it and you know, it's pretty nondescript. Now on the back, compatible with HDTVs. Plug and play gives you a better image. You know, pretty much everything that you expect from an HD TV cable. So we're gonna open up the box and see exactly how it comes out of the box. So we have a bag within the box and a couple other things in here. So let's check and see what we have. Has a one year warranty. Thank you for purchasing our product. Our chief goal is to provide you the best products and service. We will try our best to fix any problems incurred during normal usage of our products. All level height products are eligible for a one year warranty. Get the free replacement by contacting us in advance. You can reach us below at uh, different channels as necessary. So very cool. So very similar to other cables in its class, uh, you need to have your PS2 or your PS1 set in a very specific video output. You can't have it in component video output, you, or I'm sorry, you can't have it in YCB, PB, CRPR. You need to have it set to RGB. That tells me for movies, probably won't work for us, um, but good to note. So in the bag, like with all level hike uh, cables, you get about a four foot HDMI cable. You get a micro USB power cable, and then you get the dongle itself, which is pretty much a you know universal design that they've gone with uh, to this point. So you do have a four by three or 16 by nine switch, and the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, that's where the 16 by nine you know, really kind of became more of the norm than the four by three. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in the 16 by nine by, uh, for right now. You do have a port here for a micro USB cable. One is included. Now in other level height cables, I have not needed to connect that power supply. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if I'll need to do that or not. Uh, your HDMI output on there. And then your traditional PS1, PS2 type connector there. Now I've said this about adapters and dongles like this in the past. I love this design because of the fact I can use whatever length HDMI cable I need to connect to my TV. Uh, so that's very cool. Let's check the fitment because this looks pretty nice as far as the connector type here. And we're going to take this and we're just going to plug right into the multi out. Oh, that's a very tight fit. That is a very tight fit. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, that's one thing I would say level hike my advice in the future loosen that up a little bit I mean, it's I would consider that to be a death grip look at it there I mean, Wow, look at my thumbnail the way it's turning white for me having to uh, to push in so hard 
I'll pull it back out. Wow, that is a tight fit. That's not gonna, that's not gonna come loose anytime soon. So uh, we're gonna hook it up and we are going to play some games, uh, both on the PS, the Slim PS1 and the PS2. Let's go. So first up on the PlayStation 1, we have Jet Moto 2. Ryan Schlemmer again from Castlevania Games. This one is for you. You know, pretty much kind of what I would expect out of something like this so far. Um, text here looks a little bit blurry. Um, I'm sure that it's one of those things that the PlayStation was never designed to have. Like, I'm looking at it on a 65-inch TV. It was never designed to play on a TV this size. Um, now, one thing, too, everything going into my capture card right now, I'm not using, like, an M cable or an M Classic or anything like that. What you are seeing is coming straight off of the system, through the cable, into my capture card. So it reminds me a lot of Hydro Thunder, but with uh, not jet skis or not boats, hydroplanes, whatever you would want to call it. This is one of Ryan's favorite games for the PlayStation, I guess, and I don't see it yet. <laughs> I mean, controls feel very loose. So unlike other cables I've seen from Level Hike uh, in the past, like the reds don't seem to be way blown out, um, which not that there are a ton, like there's some reds there. They don't look bad. Yep, okay. So that's Jet Moto 2. Um, Ryan, you've got a strange taste in games. Crash Bandicoot, great game for the PlayStation. It just... It's so infuriatingly challenging, but in a fair way. I have enjoyed playing Crash every time I have. Even the Switch Remaster is brilliant. So interesting to note, the analog cannot be turned on if you have one of the, uh, the Dual Shocks. Now this game definitely more familiar with than uh, some of the others, and the reds do look uh, oversaturated and hot here. Okay, okay. I will say everything looks nice and sharp, um, very crisp. The audio is great. But here, there, yeah, you can see on the uh, the apples and whatnot how the, um, the reds just seem really hot. I, I think that's just something in the way that they are designing their, their firmware and um, something I wish that they would address. Um, nice and responsive, though. I mean, no real issues with lag or latency or anything along those lines. I always thought that that was funny that you kind of got punished in the end. 12 boxes. Sorry about that. But now we're going to move over to the PlayStation 2. So one thing on the PS2, very similar to other cables, you can see the green sort of screen. Yeah, I mean, you can see the, the green and everything. DVDs, not gonna play through this. But I'm gonna throw in what I think is one of the most underrated first-person shooters on any platform, and that's Black. What I like about Black is it reminds me a lot of like the Matrix movies where everything around you is destructible. And it's, it's really, really good. If you've never played it, I definitely recommend checking it out. And this actually looks pretty good. Got him. This actually looks really good. I would say almost an early PS3 uh, quality. And like I say, such a great game. And like, I am not a huge fan of first-person shooters. I'm just... I tend to not be very good at them, um, but this game I fell in love with almost, almost immediately. I want to say I played it on the GameCube, but I could be whoa. Hey, where are you coming from or going to, buddy? I mean, the details in this world are really good. It's it's kind of hard to believe it was an EA game. I just want to play more of this now. Um, yeah, this is looking really good. I'm digging this on here. Ooh, got him in the head. All right, now we are going to fire up one of my favorite series of all time, and I'm, of course, talking Ratchet and Clank. Huh, this looks pretty dang good. 
I think as we found with a lot of the, you know, cables from other manufacturers, adapters from other manufacturers, garbage in, garbage out. The better signal you have going in, the better it's going to look coming out. Um, this looks really good. Uh, Ratchet's colors look right. The reds do not look overblown uh, like what we've seen in some of the other uh, games and cables. Again, 480i versus 480p. So I'm seeing like some shimmering effect in Ratchet's gloves here as he's breathing in and out. Um, so something to be aware of. If you like collectathons, you will absolutely love the Ratchet and Clank series if you've never played it before, uh, because you have boxes of bolts. Again, these reds look better; they don't look as hot or oversaturated or blown out. The camera on this game is not very good. Um, oh, now I got to spin around too, which is not good. There we go. Now the other thing about Ratchet and Clank is the more that you use a weapon, the stronger that it gets. So you actually are rewarded for not hoarding ammunition and everything. Oh, there be boxes there. So Ratchet and Clank looking good on here. Um, I think that's going to be be it for our test here, and we're going to wrap things up. So what do I think of the Level Hike PS1 and PS2 cable? Well, what it got right, it actually does quite a few things right. First and foremost, it is plug and play. It works with the PS1 and PS2, and it looks and sounds very, very good. Now, um, I did find a high compatibility with games, did not have any issues there whatsoever. There were a couple times on my capture card where basically I had a signal loss, had to disconnect and reconnect it. I don't know what was going on there. What, what it was probably doing was changing from uh, one resolution to another and my capture card just said, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, it's inexpensive, it's budget friendly, and again, it just plain works. What could be improved about it? On the PS1 games, again, red seemed a little bit on the hot side. Less so on the PS2 games. Um, the fact it is 480i versus 480p, obviously something I'd like to see improved in the future. And on this cable, unlike some of the other ones that I've tested of theirs, I did have to use an external power supply. They provide the cable and everything, I mean, so it's no big deal there. It's nice not having to do that though. Just one less cable to have hook up. Um, overall, I really liked it. It's probably going to be the way that I play my PS1 moving forward. PS2, probably still gonna use component cables through like my OSSC or a retro tank. But a lot of people getting back into this and just starting out, they don't have that. They don't have that kind of investment. And this is an inexpensive way to get decent quality. Not great quality, not perfect quality, but decent quality. If you're looking for great quality, for the best quality out there, you know what, for the PS1, there are HDMI mods that are out there too. Check out Voltar. He just uploaded an amazing video showing how to HDMI mod your system. 160 bucks just for the mod kit. Then you either have to install it yourself or pay an installer. This doesn't have any of that. You just plug it in and you play. It's one of the beautiful things about it. I do again want to thank the folks at Stone Age Gamer for sending us this to check out. I really did like it, like I said, this will probably be the way that I play my PS1 going forward. Oh, one other thing that could be improved, on the PS1, the connector was very, very tight. On the PS2, it was fine. So I'm wondering if it has to do more with the design of my PS1 Slim here that I have versus the cable itself. So something to kind of keep in mind. And on the PS2, as you saw, will not play DVDs through it. But let me know, is this something that you would check out? Also let me know, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, PS1 fan, PS2 fan, which one do you like better? Now if you do have any other comments or questions, as always, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. You can also go ahead and email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can hit me up on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions and Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK. Now until the end of August 2020, the folks over at Stone Age Gamer do have a discount code for viewers of Rock Solid Productions. 
I will have that down in a pin post in the more info section for you to check out. Thanks again to the folks from Stone Age Gamer for hooking us up and for hooking you guys up out there too. Now, if you do want to help support the future of Rock Solid Productions, there's a couple different ways you can do that. First and foremost, you can head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid for as little as a dollar a month. $12 a year, you get early access to all of our content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member. For $1.99 a month, you get neat little badges as well when you comment on a video or a post or during a live chat. You also get early access and exclusive content that other people generally don't see. You can also head on over to our Teespring store on screen right now where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, coffee mugs, and a whole lot more featuring modern and retro style cartridges all featuring the Rock Solid Productions logo on them. I've got some new shirts coming. I can't wait to show you guys. Finally ordered a hoodie for myself, so I'm very excited about that. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and please hit that notification bell. That way you are kept informed every time we do upload new content. Um, very good, very budget friendly, very easy way for you to play your PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2. Again, thanks to Stone Age Gamer for sending us one to check out. My name is Gary, this has been Rock Solid Productions, and our look at the Level Hike PS1 and PS2 HD cable. Pretty decent. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon.